there's legislation, uh, news of legislation that directly impacted um, drive share. So like Uber and Lyft for sure, but even like likes of like DoorDash and companies like that. Um, so this was legislation in California. California ruled that there was a lot of the, the state was trying to pass that essentially would exempt gig workers from state labor laws. So essentially all you need to know is it would, um, it benefits the company because these gig workers who are traditionally contracted, they wouldn't be subject to state labor laws, which means that companies don't have to pay out the costs associated with having labor. Right. Um, and so, the court ruled that it was unconstitutional. Doesn't mean that this can't happen in the future. It just makes it more challenging to happen in the future. Um, the companies were red pre-market, but then they actually turned green, had a decent day as, as the last time I checked. Uh, seems like not much of a big deal. Do you think this is that not a big deal? Um, I, 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 I think it's a bigger deal uh, for those who are involved and in who this directly impacts than it is the companies themselves. Um, you know, we've seen Uber and Lyft uh, move extremely well, regardless of what's going on as far as the gig the gig side is concerned. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that it, it probably will not impact the company as much as people might think. Uh, but which I don't know how I feel about the, the it, in general. I think this obviously isn't a win for the workers if they were looking for to be treated more along the lines of an actual employee. Um, but as far as the company is concerned, I think if anything, it probably helps them more than anything else. But um, looking at the stock itself, obviously, as you had mentioned, uh, it's it's actually moving pre up pretty nicely. Let's take a look at U shares of Uber right now. They're up two and a half percent. And then we look at uh, Lyft as well. And that is up today. And honestly, like the way that this has come down um, over the last uh, several weeks, and again, in response to some of the scares revolving around COVID, um, these are all, I think, good opportunities to grab the dip on, in my opinion. Uh, and even though I'm not a huge fan of Dash, the company, I, I, I do think the stock is going to continue to perform pretty well here, too. It's actually hugging right along that 50 day moving average. So all of these looking pretty good. And I think moving forward, they're probably going to uh, do pretty well, too. Well, let me clarify. This is this is a blow to the companies. And essentially, if you backtrack, there was a I think it was called um, Prop 5, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Assembly Bill 5. So Be Assembly Bill 5, and you guys don't have to remember this, but yeah. to, to explain it, um, it was a bill enacted to make employees full-time or full-time employees. And so this Prop 22 was in response to this, uh, this Assembly Bill 5. And so what the court, when you say it's unconstitutional, basically this bill can't pass. And right. so what the companies are trying to do is the companies are essentially trying to decrease their labor on their balance sheet. And so, um, it actually, I think it actually does work for the, the, these contracted employees if they ended up, or these contractors, if they end up becoming, um, looking like employees or being treated as employees. Um, and so I think it was said that, Lyft, Uber, Instacart, and DoorDash collectively spent more than $200 million to support this ballot. So the one that was viewed, deemed unconstitutional, they spent $200 million and it basically isn't going to be passed. Um, it makes sense why the companies would want this. The companies want to hire contractors so they don't have labor costs, they don't have workers' comp, they don't have unemployment, all the things that go along with hiring somebody. Right. Um, my thing about this is, We've talked about this with Uber and Lyft. I don't think this matters too much. I think it just exposes their Achilles heel, which is their cost structure, which is their balance sheet. Their model's great, it's needed, but clearly they have trouble managing their balance sheet. And so that's gonna be the issue. I don't think the answer is to skirt the system and hire people as contractors. You're not gonna get quality, you're not gonna get quality workers. You're not gonna get a quality experience. Right. Hire people, hire these drivers, pay them, 
if you can't make your business model model work, then a competitor will come in and make the business model work. That's always been the challenge for Uber. It's like the model is great. That's not a question. It's is the business pro potential for profit there. Well, yeah, it doesn't help when you pay the CEO $40 million a year either. Um, <laughs> continued to be unprofitable you know so i think i think so i mean they continue to just grow i mean they continue to grow at all costs and while i do think the stocks are going to continue to go up for a lot of the reasons that you just said um long term i'm not sure i'm, I'm digging any of these with the exception of maybe doordash and, and instacart because i think that they can get away with it i think that they have a, a actually more of a clear path to profitability than uber and lyft do um while not necessarily like outlandishly better, I think that they are better, have, you know, uh, a better setup, especially it'll be interesting because, um, you know, when we come down to a point to where you don't need people to drive these cars to drive, to, you know, share, to do ride sharing, such as the, the robo taxis that, um, uh, obviously we have yet to see, but they are coming. It'll be interesting to see how Lyft and Uber actually survive that. Yeah, we talk a lot about companies that look good for takeover targets. I'm not sure how these companies stand alone successfully. Even, yeah. I mean, even DoorDash is of the world. First off, their model sucks. Or for, as far as compensation, it sucks for these businesses. They're like, they're yeah. hammering these restaurants. And I, I, yeah. I hate it. Um, but like, why can't an Amazon buy these companies? Why can't, you know, a, a Tesla... You know, like RoboTaxi, like why can't one of these companies who have massive stockpiles, even like it sounds crazy, like a Facebook, any of these social networks right. that have cash, they don't need it to be hugely profitable. It brings people into their ecosystem. Um, it feels like there's opportunity there as well. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, we'll see how this all shakes out. Let us let us know what you guys think about this in the comments below. Um, do you still like Lyft and Uber and give us some reasons as to why you like them, even though uh, we've kind of played, we've kind of painted a pretty tough picture for them. Why do you like them? What What's, what's in it for, as far as the future of Uber and Lyft and some of the other ride sharing and gig economy related stuff? Uh, definitely. We'll love to hear from you guys.